Hi everyone, Quiveen here from CIT's Blackrock Castle Observatory. We are here nice and early at just quarter to 11 on the 5th. So we have the very full moon just over in the southeast. We also have Mercury just past its greatest elongation over in the west northwest. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about the moon this evening and Mercury reaching its greatest elongation, you can check out some of the social media videos that we've posted on the Blackrock Castle Observatory social medias over the past few days. Now, the moon is full tonight. It won't be full again until next month. And of course, this month is the month of the summer solstice. We're going to go through the whole month of June in this video and point out some key things, but we'll talk more about the summer solstice in a video specifically about that later in the month. So if you want to make sure you don't miss that video, then make sure to hit the red subscribe button next to this video and the little blue bell icon next to it to make sure you get all of the most up-to-date notifications. So very quickly, we are going to just click on the moon. We can see that it is at 100%. It's absolutely full. It's as full as it's going to get at the moment. So it will be at its fullest for most of the night. We're starting in a city like Cork. So even at quarter to 11, there's only a few bright stars visible. We've got Spica and Regulus. You can just about see the shape of Leo. There's Arcturus in Buetes. If we start turning around, we have the summer triangle up with sunset at the moment. So we have Vega, Deneb and Altair already there over in the east. And because the sun is setting down into the north northwest, the northern part of the sky will still have quite a bit of orange colour, as will most of the west this early in the evening. But we can see Capella just over there and Pollux as well just above the sun. So we have these bright stars that are already showing through, but I'm going to very quickly bring us out into the countryside. With less light pollution, of course, there's more stars in the sky, and that's true even early in the evening. So this is what the sky looks like without that light pollution. We've got a much better sense of the shape of Leo, the shape of Buetes. We can see a lot more of Scorpius down there next to the moon. There's just a lot more visible in the sky. The shape of Auriga, that almost pentagon shape is a lot more visible over the sunset. Even Mercury looks significantly brighter. So even though we are going to have a bit of extra light in the sky over the course of this month, we won't really have nighttime during this month, just astronomical twilight. But getting out into the countryside, it will still mean that you get to see these objects just a little bit earlier and you'll get to observe them for just a little bit longer. So we're after moving forward to about half 11 here and this is where we're going to start pushing forward more and more. So we can see there's still quite a bit of a glow. It's now after moving back towards the north northwest and that glow is going to stay with us all night long, especially around the day of the solstice. The moon is significantly higher higher, but as we start moving forward day by day, it is of course going to disappear and the sky will get brighter. So here we are just coming up on the 15th and by half 11, Jupiter and Saturn, they're already starting to rise. They'll be in the sky by half 11 as we approach the end of the month. And we're going to move back just a little to make sure the moon is out of the sky. The moon can provide a little bit of extra light. But here we are at half 11, there is definitely a glow over in the west northwest. This is the kind of glow that would completely disappear by 9 or 10 o'clock if it was winter time. But now that we're through to the middle of summer, it's going to stay with us all night long. And you can see that as we push later, even coming up to 1 o'clock in the morning, there's still a glow over towards the north. And this is still just the 15th, a good few days before the solstice itself. If we move forward a little bit more, well, the moon is going to come into the sky. That does provide a little bit of light, but you can see that that glow in the north stays with us all night long. That is going to make especially faint objects, especially objects towards the north, a little bit more difficult to see. But if we bring ourselves out into the countryside, there is still going to be plenty visible to us. We still have that glow of the Milky Way coming up from the south reasonably early, 
But now if we look back towards the north, it's almost as if it's still in sunset. There's almost a little bit of blue there along the northern horizon. The tail end of the Milky Way is completely blotted out. So this glow of the sun staying with us, it is going to make things more difficult to see, but that effect is a little bit worse if you're in the city. You can see here in the countryside, we've still got plenty of stars. We've still got the glow of the Milky Way. Whereas in a city like Cork, there's far less visible in the sky. That glow is on top of the glow of light pollution, which does make things just a little bit worse. If we keep moving forward towards morning time, we'll see that we've got the moon coming up in the morning by the middle of the month. But as we push towards the end of the month, Venus will also be up in the morning. <clears throat> so here's Venus, Mars, Saturn and Jupiter all visible early in the morning, just as we come to the beginning of next month. In fact, if we push a little bit later and come back a little bit further into this month, you'll see that Venus and Jupiter are both there in the morning on the morning of the solstice. So they're going to be up for the later part of this month. If we come all the way back to uh, tomorrow morning, all the way back to the morning of the 6th, the moon should still be full. But if we take a closer look at it here, it's not 100% full anymore. It's 99.9. .9. So it is very nearly completely full. <clears throat> but the moon's fullness is continuously changing. It's not just a little less full every night. How much of the moon is illuminated changes very, very slightly all of the time. It's not jumping around the earth. It's orbiting us smoothly. So we can see here on the night of the fifth, it's 100% full. But as we move towards the morning of the sixth, it goes down to just 99.9% .9 full. And this has an interesting effect because the moon takes 29 and a half days to get all the way around us. So looking at the moon here at about half 11 this evening, it's absolutely full. If we go forward just 29 days instead of 29 and a half, well, here we are on the 4th, 5th of July. It's there, it's full, but it's not 100% full. It's 99.9%. .9%, so it's there on the 4th of July next to Saturn and Jupiter. If we come all the way forward to sunrise, we'll see that it does go up to a hundred percent. So there it is rising in the morning of the 5th of July with Jupiter, Saturn, Mars and Venus. And there it is a hundred percent full. So sometimes the actual date of the full moon is 30 days after the last full moon you saw, but that's because of that interesting little half day that it takes to fully complete its orbit. So we'll see the moon full on the 5th, and rather than us seeing it full exactly 29 days later, it'll be 29 and a half. We'll see it in the morning of the 5th when it was full on the evening of the 5th this evening. We are going to have a new moon, of course, during the middle of the month, and the new moon is a great time to see fainter objects in the sky. But we'll see if we move forward in the days until how illuminated the moon is reaches the smallest value we're going to get. We're seeing it here at 0.2%. The moon is going to be invisible if it's anywhere less than 5% illuminated. It's just too close to being in front of the sun. We won't be able to see it. But here we are on the 20th, the night of the solstice, and there is just no moon. Well, not quite the night of the solstice, it's really, yeah, once we get past 11 o'clock, then we're on to the 21st. And we can see the moon there is now 1% illuminated. We've pushed a little bit later. And for us, it's really the middle of the night when the moon is at its newest or coming up to morning time at least. So the sun won't be in the sky when the moon is at its newest this month, but it may be the case in future months. Either way, it's going to be pretty much impossible for us to see. So we can see there we've got Mars, Saturn and Jupiter. They're going to be with us in the morning for the entire month. Although as we come to the very end of the month, Jupiter and Saturn are going to be hitting the horizon a little bit earlier because we are going to start seeing them in the evening. So we can see here, all of them are still visible at just half four. But as we push forward, we'll see Saturn and Jupiter actually disappearing before the sky gets too bright in the morning. So as we come up to after summertime, we'll start seeing Saturn and Jupiter more in the evenings than in the mornings. So there's going to be a few ways that the sky is going to change over the course of this month. Something happens every month, like the moon going from full to new, but seeing that glow of the solstice rising up over the north, we're really only going to see that this month. 
So if you do get the chance to go outside later in the evening, early in the morning, you know, half past midnight, one or two o'clock, you should be able to see a faint glow over towards the north and that glow should get bigger and brighter and more impressive the closer we are to the solstice. So if you're wondering what you can observe when the sky is a little bit brighter than it should be, the source of that brightness is one interesting thing to observe. Besides all of the planets that we're going to see, even if the sky gets quite bright in the evening, so we'll still see Jupiter and Saturn and even as the sun rises in the morning we'll see Mars and towards the end of the month we'll see Venus. So there's plenty for us to see even besides the glow of the solstice but of course that glow of the solstice is something we only see at this time of the year so I hope you all get a chance to get outside and take a look at it.